Hey Reddit, what are some company secrets you can reveal for a company you no longer work for? I worked at NASA as a contractor for 2 years. 90% of the computing hardware was very antiquated and out of date. I saw a lot of Dell computers from the mid 2000s still being used. Yes even pre-thin style monitors. That beige or off-white color. They are pretty underfunded and spend most of their money on more advanced hardware like supercomputers. Large servers. ETC. But the basic hardware is really out of date. In fact. The whole place looked like a museum of the 1990s. The architecture. The dress styles. The lighting. Carpet. And so on. It was very strange. Almost eerie. Come to Walmart early after 7 to 8 p.m. We mark everything down. You're welcome. As a broke student I thank you. I worked at Great Clips. The stylists are strongly advised to only cut a client's hair between 10 and 15 minutes. If the stylist's average haircut time is more than 15-17 minutes. They might get talked to by the manager about speeding up their services or written up if it continues to happen. Stylists also get paid based on how fast and how many clients they have that day. If a person comes in with a long, tangled rat's nest and wants a complicated haircut that takes you an hour to deal with, they can duck up your timed average for the day and duck your pay. There is an retail employees and probably call center sales reps are actively encouraged to lie to you to close a sale. Worked at a call center for 6 months, they were sneaky with this though you were told the priority was the communication with the customer but in reality it were your sales. Even though they told you clearly the sales didn't matter. If you wanted to sell, you literally had to lie. Dealing with angry customers that had been scammed and tricked was part of the day. They didn't care because the ratio of people not realizing was way higher. This is about a decade old. So may no longer be applicable. But. Microsoft has special pricing for non-profits that is about 1 stroke 10 the regular price. They don't advertise this. So a lot of resellers still sell the software to their non-profit customers at the regular price and enjoy the higher profit margin. Worked in several chain restaurants through college as a cook. Nothing to report that you probably haven't heard already. But I can tell you. Most of the things you've been warned about are true. But the best thing I can tell you is. Don't go to a restaurant within 30 minutes or so of its closing time. The cooks have already cleaned in an attempt to go home. At best you're getting the scraps left on the counter. At worst. Well you've pissed off the cooks. Oh. And I cooked at Hooters. They literally train the waitresses on how to flirt with customers. No. They don't like you. In fact, if you're a particularly odd looking or annoying customer, they tell the other waitresses about you and they look at you through the kitchen windows and mock you. I worked at a luxury movie theater for 3 years. Complete with service to your seat. Oversized recliner seats. Pillows and blankets. The pillows and blankets were never washed. Ever. But the break room was stocked with brand new ones. Always ask for a new blanket. Candyman here. We left chocolate out in display cases for months on end. When my friends came by to the store I told them to avoid it at all costs. Glassdoor.com does remove job reviews and does let employers choose which ones get shown first. At least they are not good at covering. It's pretty obvious when the first two are 5 stars. The managers sheet happy rainbows and dollar bills and the next 10 are 1 star reviews that sound like they are written by marines with PTSD having flashbacks to Iraq. I used to work in financial services. Agents would sell products based on the commission. And not on how well the investment actually performed. Our customer service department was pretty much always taking calls from people who had been deceived about what to expect from their investment. I work for the post office now. And I will honestly say I have never worked with such hard working people before. There are problems with managers expecting you to get things done quicker than humanly possible. And a lot of our equipment is old and falling apart. But I honestly feel like the vast majority of my co-workers are trying to take care of our customers and to just get home safely. 
Panera Bread. All of the soups. All of them come in frozen and in plastic bags. I am in Mexico and used to work at call centers. They would ask us to always state we were located in the US. I worked for Comcast and Sprint Nextel but there were some other campaigns such as HP Tech Support or Atant or Verizon. Canada here and almost guarantee if you don't hear background chatter it is not because of good mics. It is because that person is most likely working from home but still are supposed to say they are in a call center. I sell cell phones for the big three carriers and you definitely know when someone's responding from home versus an actual call center. For Rogers. The rep will always start out with their intro with thank you for calling Rogers. This is X speaking out of letter Kenny. Ontario. A lot of them seem like they are home based. But it's usually call center more often than not. I ran the lens lab at a Pearl Vision back in the day. The most expensive frames we carried. The Arminis. Cost us about $20 and cost you $400 minus $600. The most expensive lenses, outside of relophthalmic specialties. What we called MTPROAs, polycarbonate aspheric with anti-glare. Anti-scratch, cost them less than $20 and cost you $400. So a $1,000 pair of Armani glasses with all the bells and whistles? It cost about $40. The lab guy who made it was making $12 per hour. The lab itself. Top of the line from Essilor. Was about $250,000. Peanuts compared to the profit margin. All staff. Even just sales staff. Had to wear lab coats and glasses at all times. If you didn't need glasses. You just wore glasses with zero prescription. The company would provide you outright with an eye exam every year. And once per year with a pair of prescription glasses and prescription sunglasses. Top of the line as long as they were in style that year. That was actually a cool perk. Oh. This was one of my favorites, in Maine. At the time. Mainaka, Medicare, wouldn't cover anti-scratch coating for adults. All of our CR39, the basic plastic lens. Super easy to scratch, just came with that pre-applied. We were actually supposed to intentionally strip that coating for Manica customers. Costing us time and labor while depriving the customer. 99% of the time we just didn't bother. X Retail worked I worked at Target and PetSmart for some time and they both had this weird policy about stealing that I've heard applies to most big chains. Basically, a regular employee could not stop a low price thief. Obviously we can't let someone just walk out with a TV or of animal. But I was forbid from doing anything about small shoplifters. It's bad for the image of the store and if you happen to be wrong. There could be a lawsuit or discrimination accusation that could cause a lot of trouble. So most of the times they just let you walk out fully knowing you stole something. At PetSmart. I happened to be working the register when a customer came up and alerted me that there was someone stealing a bunch of dog shampoo and shoving it in her purse. The location didn't have many employees and all the beauty supplies were kept while I at the back. I called my supervisor over and she said not to do anything when the lady came to ring up one very small thing. The shampoos were very noticeably sticking out of her bag. My supervisor asked if she needed to pay for them and the person said no and we just let her walk out. Apparently if we think someone's stealing we are supposed to nice it out of them. If not oh well. It's a chain store so it's not like losing this merchandise is such a big deal I suppose. I worked at Express and Victoria's Secret for years. No employee can do anything about shoplifters. If you see someone steal something. We were supposed to go over and ask if they needed help. You could literally swipe whatever you want quickly before they call mall security and book it out of the store with hundreds of dollars in merchandise and the employees can't do anything about it because they don't want to be sued edit at the end of shift which was usually around 4 a.m. we the employees were bag checked by the manager to make certain we never stole anything also the express wall of men's professional shirts had to look immaculate before we could end our shift made me have a total different experience while shopping in any store. And to this day I put back whatever I can't afford to buy where I grab the item. 
and put it back where I found it. Completely out of respect for the employees. Side note, while working for Express, they wouldn't let me leave on Christmas Eve until 6am because of the chaos of earlier in the day. I also found out I was pregnant with my first baby and it was a complete surprise. My manager had zero sympathy to my nauseousness. She actually told me to use breathing exercises so I wouldn't puke on the floor. I never quit a job in my life. But making a scared pregnant lady work until the Santa Claus hours of the night made me realize these people don't give a sheet about me as a 6 year employee, all they care about is having enough staff to take in the exchanges the following day. If I had a good experience and felt like I was an exemplary employee, I would have gladly shown up the day after Christmas. However, the company never showed me that respect at all. So, happy holiday returns express. Worked call center for Sprint Nextel. This was before smartphone so tech support and customer support were relatively simple. 1. Staff turnover was so high that you couldn't get fired no matter how bad a CSR you were. If you turned up on time and sat at your desk the entire shift. No one gave a sheet. 2. Sometimes the exorbitant wait times were due to only having two people on shift for the entire network. Sometimes they were because CSRs would keep the line open after a customer disconnected to avoid taking another call. 3. The security identification system means jack sheet. If you've ever had an ex, stalker or anyone turn up where you live after thinking they couldn't possibly know. Blame the lazy CSR who ignored the warning notes and security protocol and gave all your information away. 4. When they say they're going to put you on hold. But there's no music. You're actually muted and we can hear everything you say. 5. Customer service. Billing and tech support were all the same people. Tech support was a roulette of good, knowledgeable people. 6. We used to have access to customers' online accounts for tech support needs. But we could also see any texts or old school MMS messages. 7. All calls are recorded. All of them. They're all stored for an indeterminate amount of time in case there's a legal need for it. Car insurance. Your credit score is a huge factor in determining your rates. People disproportionately think it's a speeding ticket in their driving history. Sure. It does. But if you wrote two identical policies for identical cars with two identical people in the same zip code. But a huge difference in credit score? You'd see completely disproportionate prices. Most agents don't talk about it and in a bigger national companies. They'll likely automatically escalate the call to a specialist. at and customer service call center is run out of Canada. They made us say we were in the US so I said I was in Detroit because it was across the river. I was a glazier. Which is a guy who works with glass. Residential. High rise. Commercial. Etc. Before I went through an accredited apprenticeship I worked at a well known glass shop in town. I started out doing residential work. I remember going to this lady's house. Measuring her broken window. Calling the office to get a quote. And they asked me. How nice of a house is it? I asked why would that matter? Quotes are based on SQ footage. Type of glass. And man hours. The office lady responded if it's a nice house we charge more. What was embarrassing is I was on speaker phone. How can they base a price on how nice the house is? Ducking ridiculous. The look on that old lady's face was bizarre. I was embarrassed as hell. Needless to say. She didn't use us for the install. Edit. Funny story about glass. This guy named Dan did some work at a condo in town. Within a few days the lady who owned the condo called the shop and wanted the mirror removed of the wall. I think it had a scratch or something. Removing a mirror that has been glued to the wall can be tricky. Installing the mirror with mirror mastic, glue basically, is supposed to be done a certain way. A dollop of glue within every 12 inches. In case the mirror ever breaks it doesn't fall off the wall. You'll have enough glue to hold it up no matter where it breaks. I carefully remove this mirror in one piece. All the while the older woman is watching me in silence. When the mirror finally comes off and I set it down I look up at the wall. 
Dan had drawn stick figures of a guy ducking another person doggy style. Mirror mastic is applied from a corking tube. So his picture looked like ancient hieroglyphics. Although obvious what it was. That was an awkward conversation. Companies that deal with commercial truck driving licenses often have their drivers fudge the logbook numbers to make it look legal. Throw away for legal reasons. I'm a former senior executive at Racket Ben Kaiser. Also known as RB. This is a company that owns global brands such as Vanish, Mucinex, Strepsils, Durex, Shoal, and many more. Household goods and health products. First secret. RB was created from the merger of Reckitt and Coleman and Ben Kaiser. The latter. Was a chemical company that made its money from selling gas to the Nazis. Some companies have admitted their part in doing this. Such as BASF and Bayer. But RB has been able to bury this successfully for many years. Second secret. RB used to have a pharma division in the US that was behind a known drug, Suboxone Subutex. These are drug us for people who are hooked to opiates. They essentially managed to convert addicts from opiates into addicts to Suboxone. All done legally. But knowing internally that they were creating more damage to consumers than the damage opiates would cause. This part of the business was spinned off few years ago into its own company. Third secret. RB has products that do nothing. In Europe. They sell all sort of products that have wide marketing claims which are entirely bullshit. Some of these products include brands such as Finish. Durex and Calgon. Fourth secret. RB is part owned by the elusive Rianman family. These are a couple of very private brothers who inherited a large share ownership into RB. Very little can be found about them. But the leadership team knew not to duck with them. They had full control over the previous CEO and owned the former chairman of the board. Reckitt Ben Kaiser is one big marketing scam after the next. They consider themselves a fast moving consumers goods company. This means. To move fast. Every year tons of new products would come to shelves. Literally same dog with different collar. New pack. New marketing gimmicks. And new TV campaigns. Lastly biggest secret of all. This is a company that has been defrauding shareholders, investors and also fooling analysts thanks to constantly reshaping its business. If a particular area or region wouldn't have the expected results, the business would transform to maybe say Europe and North America are scouted as one big region. This makes it impossible for analysts to compare like for like results. Because over the last 10 years, They've restructured the business every single year consistently. To fool everyone. Worked at PetSmart. I was actually told by a manager that it wasn't my responsibility. As a goddamn pet care associate. To tell people things like a plecto. An algae eating fish that grows a foot. Was inappropriate for a 10 gallon tank. I don't know if it was that particular PetSmart or if they're all like that. But they definitely prioritized profit margin over animal welfare. You have people like me who actually give a shit. But it's just a few of us against a tidal wave of ignorance and straight up negligent malice. I'd be curious what other pet smart workers have experienced. Please chime in. Your kid is probably in school with someone who is super dangerous and we often really can't do anything to protect them from other students. Even kids who are being horribly abused are hard to remove from the home. If you don't make multiple CPS reports, chances are almost 100% nothing is going to be done. Multiple people making multiple reports. Keep calling. It makes a difference. The person who tells you they had a false report of domestic violence or child abuse is almost certainly lying. Except in the actually, refreshingly, rare cases of someone doing it as revenge. No one really wants to help vulnerable children. It's too expensive. The system isn't built for it. And it's suicide for politicians to massively increase funding to foster care and support services. Schools just don't have the resources to deal with kids. Even within the past 10 years. There's been a massive increase in the number of kids who have mental health issues. Are violent. Are developmentally delayed and need specialist attention. 
A few minutes with the on-site therapist isn't enough. And neither is the 15 minutes they get with the OT. And again. No one wants to pay for it. But everyone wants to complain about the number of administrators required at schools. I work with a school system that had a huge increase of administrators in the past 15 years. But the reality is that most of them are needed. There's an entire department dedicated to just getting families medical services. Clean clothes. School supplies. Etc. We'll put on a smiling face and be nice. But the reality is that a lot of this is political. Too many families with parents who are seriously mentally ill are not able to access services. Too many families living in poverty. Too many families dealing with drug and alcohol misuse. I could go on and on.